everyone. I'm Shannon Slatten. Every day our news team is out in your community bringing you stories from the place where you call home. Here's a look at today's stories. And remember, you can always find more on our website, ccxmedia.org. We've been really lucky and fortunate um, that people are still coming out. COVID-19 has been catastrophic for many businesses, but not for those selling RVs and trailers. Sales are booming. We were pleasantly surprised with uh, the amount of people interested in buying RVs based on kind of the worldly situation. At Minneapolis trailer sales in Rogers, RV purchases typically peak in the spring, but this year it's higher than usual. We have a lot of first time RVers coming in. Um, it's kind of a new hobby slash new, you know, way to vacation in the summer um, with their kids. Because of the pandemic, people are cooped up and eager to discover the USA. That has fueled RV sales. People are working from home. Kids are being homeschooled, so everyone's stuck in their house. RVs are a great travel option because physical distancing comes naturally. And I think this is a great way to be able to get on the road, I guess, uh, get in the outdoors, experience kind of what Minnesota and the surrounding areas has have to offer while still social distancing and being safe. At the KOA campground in Maple Grove. It's a fun place to be. RVs can be spotted everywhere on the premises. We usually try and stay three or four days and then move on to the next area. If you crave a trip, but are skittish about getting on a jet or staying in a hotel. We're going to go out to Padre Island in September. Avoiding crowds is easy in an RV. It's our own space. We don't have any problems with people, you know, interfering with us. Everybody here does the social distancing. You wave from at least six feet away, if not further. RV and trailer lovers say this nomadic lifestyle can break up the monotony of being in the same place at the same time. We're going a little further north, up to Lake Superior, and from there we don't know where we're going. So just how popular has RVing become? Well, according to one RV rental site, bookings have increased by 1,000% since April 1st. In Maple Grove, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. Many people are using technology to connect with their doctors during the COVID-19 pandemic. A Maple Grove clinic shows us how telemed appointments are benefiting their patients. Oakdale OB-GYN is a, is a busy independent uh, single specialty OBGYN practice in the Twin Cities. We're the largest practice of its kind in, in Minnesota. Like many clinics across the country, Oakdale OBGYN was already using some form of telemedicine before the COVID-19 pandemic. About 10 appointments per month were telemed. Now that number has grown substantially. We're now seeing around 700 telemedicine patients a month um, and have been able to quickly uh, ramp up our ability to see patients virtually. Dr. Matthew Palmer says the clinic is using an app called Well Health. The platform interfaces with electronic medical records so doctors and nurses can better communicate with patients. We can use it to send uh, individual messages to patients, uh, but we can also send group messages out. Dr. Palmer says the technology has many advantages, including keeping patients safe from exposure to the coronavirus. You really can't um, over communicate in a time where people have a lot of anxiety about even going out in public, you know, during this current situation. Although OBGYN appointments can be intimate in nature, Dr. Palmer says patients can still benefit from virtual visits. You know, a simple conversation can be had regarding fetal movement, you know, sim normal symptoms of pregnancy versus questions the patient might have. However, Dr. Palmer says virtual visits are not ideal for everyone. You know, we're very selective and careful about which patients we use this type of platform for. Uh, but there are patients that are low risk that don't require a weekly visit um, to, to provide you know, reassurance for their pregnancy. Oakdale OBGYN says the virtual visits have been so successful, they plan to keep the program long after COVID-19 is gone. And I would say overwhelmingly our patients have been very satisfied and happy with being able to communicate with us in this way. For more information on this story, check out our social media pages or log on to ccxmedia.org. Sonia Goins, CCX News.
It's a concert unlike any other for Osseo schools. 90 students orchestrating the sound to Royal Crown March. It's almost like, you know, they can see themselves in the, in the performance. So it's like they're watching the concert of them performing, which is certainly not the usual thing. Phil Hatchner teaches band at Elm Creek, Rice Lake, and Fernbrook Elementary Schools. Bands across the world now, with performances being canceled, we've looked for other ways to basically still give the students a performance opportunity. Hatchner admitted he was hesitant to start a project like this. I'd never done it before. Um, you know, I have pretty minimal experience with the software. The band teacher explained the process. After each student played along to a recording of the music at home, they sent the clip to Hatchner. Almost everybody plays at the beginning. So I would take their video and you could see the little audio file underneath it. And then you'd see where the peak was where it started. And then you just kind of line those up. How long did it take you to complete this project? I'll be honest with you, I don't even know. I don't want to know. <laughs> it was a long time. <laughs> After persevering through technology, families and friends were invited to watch the virtual concert. I think it's it's so cool for them to have this final product, this video that they can go back and watch. While the virtual band was successful, Hatchner says nothing beats hearing the tunes in real life. We certainly can make it work, but it doesn't compare to the real in-person experience. Yang, CCX News. Center qualified for the state girls basketball tournament in March, but didn't get to finish the tourney because of the COVID-19 outbreak. As Jay Wilcox reports, the Pirates' top player has announced her college choice. She's a big-time player who will be a Big Ten performer. Park Center's Adalia McKenzie recently announced that she'll accept a basketball scholarship to play for the University of Illinois. Um, I'm very excited. Um, I really like the environment and the vibe that I got from the coaches. Like, um, I already had a relationship with two of the coaches that went there because they came from Marquette. They just know my potential and like, I really had a good connection with them. And like, it's a good um, school, like academically, so that was really good. Well, actually, I was gonna wait because you know AAU, but like, I wasn't sure if it was gonna happen or not. But that didn't really rush me. I just kind of had a feeling like this is a school and I was ready to make that decision after talking to them and like talking to my family. And I actually had a dream about committing there. So I'm like, uh oh, like, think this is it. The COVID-19 situation put the brakes on the end of the state girls basketball tournament and the AAU season. It's been really hard. Like I miss going to the gym, going to Lifetime almost every day and hooping with my friends, but I hoop at the park and I also have a sport court in my home, so I'm really thankful for that. But I miss hooping with my friends and just being competitive and able to like to play. McKinsey's North Tartan AAU team just started practicing, and she's hopeful there'll be at least a few tournaments this summer. Like everyone, Adalia's had other things besides basketball on her mind lately, as her family had a personal connection to George Floyd. The whole situation is really sad and it kind of really touched my heart because my dad knew him. My dad used to preach at Turning Point and he would go there every Tuesday and George and my dad were really close. So it was just sad knowing that had happened and just how the community was just suffering from that. While much of the AAU schedule has been canceled, McKenzie's North Tartan Club is still hoping to host the Summer Jam Tournament from July 31st to August 2nd. While Minnesota's prep golfers were not able to compete this spring, several seniors from the class of 2020 did get a chance last week to play in a tournament one more time as high school players. With no high school season to play in this year, the one-day 18-hole Minnesota High School Boys Senior Golf Showcase provided over 100 prep golfers from around the state a chance to compete again. Several local golfers played in the event, including Cooper Markham of Maple Grove. Well, he's got a high school player with a nice approach here on the fourth hole of the west course at Bunker Hills. Markham shot a five over par score of 77 to tie for 27th place. Parker Colesdorf played his high school golf at Champlin Park. A Maple Grove native with a nice chip on west number five. 
He shot a round of 86. Thomas Buck of Golden Valley was one of three Armstrong High School players competing in the showcase. Teeing off here on East Course number one. He came in with a score of 91. Ben Long of New Hope and Maranatha Christian Academy tied Markham for low score among local players. The lefty just misses this birdie try on East number one and shoots a round of 77. Stuart Hansel of Golden Valley and Armstrong High School here on East number two. He shot a front nine score of 41 on his way to an 88. And his high school teammate, Jordan Slagle of New Hope, misses his birdie try on East one, shoots a round of 82. The showcase winner was Gunnar Bruin of Chanhassen, who carded a five under par score of 67. In Coon Rapids, John Jacobson, CCX Sports. Amy Burnham, a 2020 Wyzetta High School graduate, finished second in the one day girls showcase event. That's all for sports. I'm John Jacobson. Find more local news stories at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.